Hey team, and welcome to the one where I talk about the skills you need to be a web developer or front-end engineer. So I think to start this video off, we should talk a little bit about the difference between a web developer and a front-end engineer. There's a lot of overlap here, and it can get confusing. But typically, as far as I see, if there's a position open for a web developer, that means that you're going to be working on a website and the website alone. So you would be taking care of the user interface interaction on the customer facing website. A front end engineer typically works on some sort of web app that has a lot of interaction. Typically it's considered maybe like a higher level role. Um, although that's kind of just the connotation of the terminology and I'm not so sure that it's necessarily true, but typically you would be working on something that would be called an application as opposed to a website. Now, small disclaimer on that point that I just made, there's a lot of overlap and job titles are very subjective and completely dependent upon the company that's hiring and who decided to come up with the title. And they don't necessarily reflect that like engineer means this and web developer means that. But as a generality, it's a pretty good rule to take into account that a front end engineer is typically working on a web application and a web developer is working on a website. All right, so now that we have the semantics out of the way, the first thing that either a front end developer or a web developer is going to need to learn is HTML and CSS. And the big reason for this is that everything is built on HTML and CSS. Now the way to break this down or what's the difference between the two things, they work hand in hand. HTML is the actual content on a website and CSS is what makes it look pretty. So it's the styles. They're the first two languages you should try to learn if you're gonna wanna work on the front end. The really, really awesome part about that is that there are a million different free resources to learn HTML and CSS. And they're very basic programming languages, so they're not the hardest thing to pick up in the world. And you can find out pretty quickly if you like this stuff or not by just taking a few courses with HTML and CSS. So just as a resource, I got my start learning HTML and CSS through Codecademy's basic HTML CSS tutorial. And I will link that down below and you can check it out completely free and a pretty good introduction into the world of making a website. So now that you've looked into HTML and CSS, you may be thinking, can I get a job with this? And the answer is probably no. I don't know for many markets if that's enough. I would assume not. And if it is, it would probably need to be backed by some sort of design background, knowing Photoshop, Illustrator, and you'd probably be working more in like a design role as opposed to an actual developer role. So what is it that gets you over the hump and gets you paid that tech money, cash in them checks as a web developer or as a front end engineer? And what is it that you need to know? Well, there's only one answer for this and it's the programming language of the web. It's JavaScript. So JavaScript is a programming language that has no relation to Java in itself, simply named JavaScript because Java was popular when it was invented and they were trying to take on some of that popularity, I guess. So we've already found out that HTML is the content on the website. It's the words, it's the text. It's all of that good stuff. And CSS is what makes everything pretty. So what does JavaScript do? So JavaScript is the interactive element of a website or a web application. It's what takes a website from just being static text with pretty style and making it interactive to the point where it functions as though a piece of software on your computer would function. All of that is done through JavaScript. Every browser has it, every computer has it, and it is universally accepted as the language of the web, which makes it a really powerful thing to learn. So now we come to the point in the video where I'm going to say something that may be considered controversial, and if it is, feel free to leave a comment down below and we can have a conversation about it. But in my understanding and what I've seen so far, it is the truth, at least in the Raleigh-Durham market. So JavaScript is the backbone of the internet, JavaScript. And there is this library for JavaScript called jQuery. And some people just learn jQuery and they can program in jQuery. And every day I program in jQuery, I don't use vanilla JavaScript very, I, I use it very rarely. So why would I tell you to learn JavaScript and not jQuery? Well, jQuery is built on JavaScript. And if you understand the basic functionality of JavaScript, and if you have mastered JavaScript, you can do everything that jQuery can in vanilla JavaScript. Having that good backbone of knowledge there is going to allow you to learn more 
about JavaScript and about programming than just learning the library of jQuery and taking that shortcut. Is it easier to learn jQuery and get a kickstart and be able to build cool stuff with it? Probably. But are you going to have as good of a knowledge base once you get into more advanced things? And will it serve you better in your career to learn vanilla JavaScript first? Absolutely. All right, so small technical difficulty. My camera decided to go ahead and die in the middle of me shooting. So I went ahead and plugged it in and just ate some dinner, but now we're back. If I repeat anything, I'm sorry. I tried to make sure I knew what I was talking about from before. So learning JavaScript is a little bit more of an involved process than HTML or CSS, but Leo's trying to get in the shot again. But it's something that's definitely worth doing if this is a career that she wanted to be in. All right, so if you're looking to learn JavaScript, there are a bunch of free resources online, including Code Academy's uh, JavaScript website. There's also a free ebook called Eloquent JavaScript, which is something that we used in the cohort or in the bootcamp as pre-work, which is an awesome resource. And then also down below, I'm going to link a course online. It's a 10 hour course called JavaScript Understanding the Weird Parts, which is something I took actually after I graduated from the bootcamp. And it does a really good job where Codecademy kind of fails in teaching the theory behind JavaScript and like the inner workings of it and letting you understand kind of how you write code and how that interacts with the browser um, and kind of the nitty gritty like nuts and bolts of the language. That's something you should look into once you have a solid foundation or understanding of how to like write the code. So now that you have like HTML and CSS, JavaScript under your belt, and you have a firm and solid understanding of those things, becoming a web developer is a real possibility. Working on websites, you can pretty much do that. So if that's all you're looking to do, then by all means at this point, you pretty much have the necessary skills to go out and look for a job. The search can be difficult if you're self-taught, but you do have the skills that most people would recommend for a junior developer role. So if you want to go a step further and you want that front-end developer or front-end engineer role and you want to work on web apps, there's another step that you probably need to take to be able to land one of those jobs. And that comes down to learning an MVC framework. Now, what is that? An MVC framework is essentially a framework that lies on top of JavaScript and it's a way to build code in a little bit more of an eloquent way than just throwing a bunch of vanilla JavaScript on your application. I believe almost all big web applications have a JavaScript framework built on them or built with them or they're built out of a MVC framework. And the big kind of players in this game right now are going to be Angular, React, Ember, Backbone, and there are probably a hundred others. Um, there seems to be a ton and they always come out all the time. But the best way to understand or to learn which one you should pick up is to go on Indeed and LinkedIn and those kind of websites and look at the job postings in your area. Most tech markets kind of gravitate towards one of those frameworks. The one in Raleigh and Durham that's really popular is Angular and Angular 1X. There's actually an Angular 2 out now, which is absolutely different than Angular 1, but it we are a Angular 1 market, so that is what I learned as my framework at the bootcamp. Now, a lot of job postings for these kind of roles will say experience in a framework, and then they'll list out like four or five of them, and it's okay if you don't necessarily have React experience, but you have Angular experience and you're applying to a React job or something like that, but I would tend to try to get your skills to match up with the market as much as possible. So at this point, if we're learning on our own and we have knocked out HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and gotten a good understanding of an MVC framework, then you have all of the skills that I had when I entered the job market. That is what the Iron Yard got me to. They gave me HTML and CSS, JavaScript, and a framework. So now it's really up to you. If you wanted to learn another language to kind of bolster what your knowledge base is, maybe a backend language like Ruby or PHP or God forbid Java, feel free to go out and try to accumulate those skills as well. But if you're looking for a front end job and you have the requisite skills to get a front end job, 
feel free to start applying and show them what you can do. And in my interview, or no, and in my like by the numbers, how I got my job video, I talked about it a little bit. And I would say my biggest piece of advice is once you have these skills and you can demonstrate that you know these things, one, make sure you share your GitHub profile with every job that you apply for. Past that, make sure you have a portfolio page that shows off what you've done and what you've built. And number three is write a convincing cover letter or write an email that tells these hiring managers or people in the jobs that you're applying for that you have a passion for this and you want to show what you can do. And offer to do coding challenges. Offer to write up some code or look at their code base or offer what you can to show whoever it is that's going to be looking at you as a candidate that you know what you're doing. Because once you get that first job, it's a lot easier to get the second job. You just have to convince somebody to take a risk on you if you're self-taught to give you that opportunity. All right, guys, so that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for me today. If you have any questions about resources to get your learn on with any of the technologies that I mentioned today, feel free to ask them down below or hit me up on Twitter or Instagram, 937 Aaron on both of those. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys may have. And past that, if you liked the video, please hit that like button and subscribe down below. I do a web developer video once a week. I'll be doing daily vlogs in November if you haven't heard already. Most of them are going to be centered around writing and other things like that. But I will be doing a daily vlog. If you want to check those out, hit subscribe. As always, if you wanted to share this video on Facebook or Twitter or anything like that, that would be super awesome and I would love you forever. And last but definitely... And last but definitely not least, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who has liked or subscribed or commented on any of these videos or just watched them and enjoyed them. I just want to thank you for the support because it really keeps me motivated to keep making these as I see people are watching them and enjoying them. So thank you very much for that. So until next time, I will see you guys later.